Oh, this is a study we look at lung cancer in never smokers. Um, this is a particularly interesting question because lung cancer, naturally people think it's a uh, environmental disease. Uh, how come never smokers also develop lung cancer? So our hypothesis long time ago was there is a genetic susceptibility underlying lung cancer. What's tr triggered also why we look at genetic susceptibility is that even among the heaviest smokers, only 10 to 20 percent develop lung cancer. So obviously supporting the notion of genetic or individual susceptibility. And several studies have been done to look at the genetic effect, but mostly overwhelmed by smoking effect because uh, most of patients in the study are smokers. Very few are never smokers. So what we do differently are we took only the never smokers so we can purify the gene effect, so to speak. And of course, this is much harder to do. It took us 12 years to collect uh, samples and enroll patients into studies. Um, and then it also involved five institutions in the nation. Mm. And uh, finally, uh, we got our work done. What we find is it, it, it's very interesting. What we took the way to do it is to uh, un use an unbiased search in the whole human genome because of the genome technology uh, are available or became available in the past two to three years. And we searched the whole genome for the differences between the never smoker lung cancer patients and uh, normal subjects who are also never smokers. And then we not only found the hits in the genome that associated with the lung cancer in never smokers, we also validated it in three different studies which are collaborating with Mayo Clinic. And uh, the gene particularly we are linked to is GPC5. And what we found is that people harboring a variation in this gene have a 50% increased risk developing lung cancer. The never smokers are the people who really never smoked cigarettes all their lifetime or other tobacco products. But in the study, we allowed a few people who smoked less than 100 cigarettes. So those people tested it and really didn't go on with it, so it's really minimal, if any. Uh, some people uh, uh, were mixed with the non-smokers, but non-smokers we typically don't use in this context because uh, former smokers who already quit smoking are also defined as non-smokers, if you look at now, so we call it never smoker. Oh, the three things we look at is that this is not only gene, we, we're pretty sure it's not only gene related to lung cancer development in never smokers. And so we're going to continue to search more to see how this gene uh, have its effect in middle of other to be defined genes. Then we can accurately calculate the risk this gene really impose on a normal individual. And this is the first thing. The second thing is that we try to see whether this gene have any uh, clinical significance in terms of patients' responses to therapies and their survivals. That means we need to stratify patients by harboring this gene variation or not to link to their treatment regimens and the responses. To and this also can help to develop new targets of therapy. And thirdly, this is going to open the era of treating never smokers and smokers differently in lung cancer. Right now, they basically follow the same treatment regimen. Uh, we'll try to do in the next phase is to see whether this gene have a differential effect among people who never smoked but have the 
differential exposure history or even family history of lung cancer and, and we can test whether this particular gene behaves differently in a different subset. So if a patient uh, or a, a general person ask whether they harbor the gene or, or whether they are at risk of lung cancer, and this is one of the measures that we can take to answer the question. At least we know if this person harbored this variant or not, and then um, at least it can answer the lung cancer you developed is not caused by this variant if the person not harboring this variant and we can search for other causes. The key message is, I think, again, I, I wrap it around in three uh, key points. One is that uh, we do have evidence there is a genetic predisposition to lung cancer in never smokers, and uh, we will soon know whether this genetic change would lead to different therapeutic measures. And uh, lastly, we also can use it to tease apart which patient could be counted for by the genetic changes and, and which patients are not.